Hello everyone! In this video lesson, we will demonstrate how to enable and set the PAD controller in the CFW500 series frequency inverter. The use of this type of control in the inverter creates process stability and promotes energy savings in several applications when required level, pressure, flow, and temperature control. Many of the inverters already have this regulation method in build, and that is the case with the CFW500. We will present how to control the outlet pressure at the pipeline of a pumping system. We will have a reference point that is the desired value, also called a set point. Also, a measured value that is the process variable. In this application, the inverter will control the motor speed in order to keep the measured value equal to the desired value. We will then demonstrate the PID controller operation through a simulation by using a training suitcase. Based on the CFW500 inverter is with the factory settings and motor data is already programmed via the oriented startup, we will start setting the operating mode. This is done by assessing P to 20. For this example, we will change it to 1, remote mode only. Moving on, we'll set P to 22, speed reference and remote, to the value 0, which configure the speed control on the HMI bottoms. In this exercise, we'll set two digital inputs. The DI1 input will be set to the run stop function, adjusting P263 to 1, which is the factory default. The other digital input will be DI3 with the manual automatic function being assessed by P265 and set it to 22. Thus, when the switch is in manual, the speed is controlled by the operator and in automatic by the PID controller. So, let's get it started with the PID controller specific parameters. The first one is the P203, which defines how the feedback signal would be read. In this example, it will be by the analog input 1, so we will set the parameter to 1. Moving on, we will set the P233 to 0. It defines the type of analog signal that the inverter receives from the process. Here, the potentiometer sends a signal of 0 to 10 volts, so P233 to 0. Keep in mind that there are other common options such as 4 to 20 milliamps. Now, we will define the action method of the PAD controller, which can be direct or reverse. We will set P527 to, to 0 to have a direct response. It means that an increase in motor speed will increase the process variable, called as directly proportional. The reverse response method works in a way that an increase in motor speed will decrease the process variable. In our experimental case, since we intend to control the pressure in the pump outlet pipe, we will set as direct response. Increasing speed will make system pressure come up. We also have to adjust P536, which defines the set point adjustment occurred. In this case, we will set to 1, becoming the automatic adjustment activated. It means that when the digital input DI3 is set to automatic, the value from P40 which is the reading of the PID process variable, will be the new set point value. We will show the setting in the simulation later. 
to facilitate to visualize the PID controller of setting the parameters related to the PID onto the HMI display is recommended. In the CFW500 menu, we will select the HMI parameter set. Once this is done, we navigate to parameter P205, where we select the main display variable. Then, to visualize the PID process variable, we set P205 to 40. Then, on P206, we will set the set point value in the HMI secondary display. So, P206 to 41. After the inverter parameters has been set, we will then make the simulation of a pump system with the analog potentiometer connected AI1 input, which will play the role of the pressure transducer commonly installed in the pump outlet pipe. This feedback signal can be monitored through the main display of the HMI. You can find on the side of the screen an analog indicator connected to the analog output of the inverter. This will indicate the motor speed in percentage. We also have four digital inputs. The digital input DI1 is set to run stop and the digital input DI3 is set to manual automatic of the PID controller. The other digital inputs in this example were not used. Then we will give the start command through the digital input DI1, run stop, and initially we will operate with the PID controller in manual, since DI3 is opened. In manual mode, using the HMI keys, we set the motor speed in order to obtain a pressure to the system. We will simulate this desired pressure by our potentiometer. For example, let's set it to close to 50%. When the desired value is reached, the digital input DI3 is switched to automatic. Note that at this moment, the value of the process variable becomes our set point. So now, suppose in a real case scenario, when the pressure measured in the system which is the process variable, drops in relation to the desired value. Note that an increase in motor speed occurs. This increase in motor speed causes an increase in pressure. This pressure will increase until we have the desired value equal to the measured value again. In the opposite condition, where the measured pressure exceeds the desired value, the frequency inverter will decrease the motor speed. This decrease in speed will bring a reduction in pressure until we have the desired value equal to the value of the process variable again. Here you can find a graphic representation of the PID controller diagram block set point. On the first step of this procedure, we defined the desired value, which in our example was a 50% set point. On the feedback step, we have the measured value of the process, which in this example was defined in P203 by the analog input 1. We also define the type of the action taken in our application as direct response. Thus, the increase in motor speed causes an increase in pressure in the pipeline. PID gains. In our demonstration, we kept the factory adjusted gains in inverter. 
However, it is important to note that the adjustment of the PAD gains is a procedure that requires attempts to achieve the desired response time. In the inverter programming manual, there is a whole chapter related to the PAD, where the values of the gains are suggested. That's a possibility to start the application with the PAD. Selection And in this final step, the A3 was set for manual automatic. All of this then enables motor speed control. Keep in mind that the motor speed variation is what keeps the process variable constant. This was the control connection used in our example, where we use DI1 as run stop and DI3 as manual automatic. The pressure transducer was simulated by the analog potentiometer connected to the analog input AI1. You can see here a list of the parameters set in the example. These are the parameters related to the mode of operation and the inputs. These are related to the PID regulator. And finally, these are the parameters of the HMI. In some applications, such as pumps, the inverter has a feature that can reduce the power consumption even more. It is called slip function, which shuts down the motor at low speeds when there is no interference of the motor to maintain the process variable stable. This function is enabled simply by setting the P217 sleeping frequency and P218 sleeping time. When the motor is at a frequency below the value set in P217 for longer than the time defined in P218, the motor will stop. For this example, on a pump, when the pressure drops below the set point value, the motor will restart. Note that P217 must be adjusted within the maximum and the minimum frequency limits. For further assistance on PID controller method or other CFW500 functionalities, please check the manuals available in our website. Thank you very much and see you next time.